Hello everyone, my name is Derek Floyd, and I'd like to welcome you to a special edition of Beautiful Now Live. We're calling Five Steps to Starting Your First Podcast. So many of you have written into us saying, hey, I'd like to start a podcast someday or put something on YouTube, but I just don't know where to start. I don't know what to buy or even how to get my vision together. Just don't know where to get things going. Well, this segment is for you. But before I give you all the cool information and knowledge, you got to do me a favor. You got to stop right now, pause for me, and hit me with a like or subscribe to the channel. This lets me get the most updated content to you as soon as it's available. And also hit that little gray bell right next to it. That lets me notify you when new content is there. But last but not least, most importantly to me, if you really enjoy what you see here, share it with a friend. This lets me listen. share it with a friend because I know we want to make sure everybody leaves uplifted, encouraged, and inspired. But before I get started, I want to find out how many of you out there are first time podcasters. Raise your hand. Are you out there? Okay, how many of you professional podcasts? You've been doing it for a while, but you want to take it to the next level. (laughs) That would be me. Okay, well, I guarantee you there's a few nuggets in these five steps that are going to help you, the beginner and the professional, make your first podcast the best it can be. So let's dive in together and check them out. Now, I bet most of you are already thinking that the first thing you want to do to have a great podcast or have great content is to buy a bunch of expensive equipment like cameras and lights and green screens and the whole nine. And of course, those things will help. But can I tell you there's something even more important than having the right gear? Believe it or not, the first thing you want to do, the first step of having a great podcast, is to choose the right subject or focus. Now, that seems kind of a a no-brainer, right? But think about this. Let's dig a little deeper here. What's the focus that you're going to talk about and have all your creativity circle around? What's something that you're passionate about? Is it something that people will want to hear from you and actually come back to hear you talk about on a more regular basis? Your content's got to be something that you're constantly creative for and that you have the why behind the what. Because sometimes you'll not want to feel like recording that content and you're going to have to have the driving force to believe in what your content's about. And for extra credit, you actually want to narrow down your niche a little bit. But what does that mean? Well, here's an example. Let's say your topic or focus is going to be parenting. Well, that's a pretty broad stroke. If you put that into Google, there's tons of people talking about parenting. But what if you said single parenting? Okay, that wipes out quite a few. What if you said teenage single parenting? Okay, now we're getting somewhere. You want to make sure Google and YouTube work for you when they type in what they're looking for. After all, what good is creating amazing content if no one's there to see it? So narrow down your niche and choose a great focus or subject. That is always step number one. Okay, you've gotten through step one and you've chosen your focus or your subject. But whoa, slow down the horses here before you jump and get your camera and lights. Because now we got to get to step two. And that is finding your target audience. Now you're thinking, who? What? My target? This isn't a bullseye class. Well, kind of it is. The content has to be created for someone specific, right? You just can't throw it up there and hope that someone tries to find it. Your target audience is the specific person that you create the content for, and that takes a little bit of research. Companies all over the world spend marketing dollars in the thousands to try to figure out who the particular product is built for or how they can market it to that person. And you kind of have to do the same about your content. Is your content designed for young people? Maybe millennials? Uh, mature adults? Who, who is the content designed for? Who's going to be looking for your actual podcast? You want to make sure you narrow down those things to make sure you're answering that customer's questions. Being the thing that they're looking for, having it built just the way they want to see it. That's the way you're going to find your target audience. And they'll be the ones that'll be the tribe that will find you forever. Now you're saying tribe? Okay, digging a little deeper here on the word tribe. Your tribe is going to be people that follow you on whatever platform you're on. If you go live on Facebook, they'll follow you there. If you do something on Twitch, they'll be there too. They'll answer great questions. They'll always be there when you need them. And they'll be the ones that will always support if you're doing a project, even if you're selling a product. Your tribe will be the first people that will come to your aid when you're looking to start a brand new project. So as you start to build your content, you want to have a great target audience that's going to be your tribe and follow you everywhere. You want them to be loyal, just like you're loyal to creating the content. So 
your second step before you get that camera in your hand is always going to be find your target audience or your tribe. Now that you've actually laid the foundation for your podcast, now it's time to go and jump and find that gear you've been trying to get your hands on this whole time. Or as they say in the movies, lights, camera, and action. <laughs> so now we're going to dive into step three, which is really important. It's one of the first parts of your hardware, and that is creating your lighting. Now, if you're feeling more of a headshot, a simple ring light can be pretty effective. And IK Multimedia just happens to have two kits that have ring lights within them. Video Creator Bundle 1 has a ring light, a tripod, and an actual mic lav. The Video Creator Bundle HD has a larger ring light and also a tripod and a handheld microphone for quick and easy setup. But if you're going to need something outside that space or maybe want to capture the whole room, you might want to get some of the lighting kits that actually add larger lighting for colors and that you could angle to get the light just the way you want it inside your room. Even further, if you want extra credit, you can get one of the kits that has the green screen behind it and use software like Ecamm to be able to put a different scene behind you, making you look more professional, giving you that edge. This is going to make your podcast look even more streamlined when you have that green screen behind. Most importantly, you want to be able to make sure your color looks just like you. Don't copy someone else's. Get your color scheme to fit your personality and your creative flow. So the third part or the third key to having a great podcast is creating your lighting. Now that you got your room all set, the lighting is ready to go, the colors look good, and you look unique in your own set, it's time to follow what the movies say and go lights, camera. That's right, time for step four, which is choosing the right camera. Now you can imagine there are so many cameras out there and so many different varying degrees of difficulty. So how do you choose the right camera? A lot of the content creators that I talk to say the first camera you should always use is the one in your pocket. That's right. <laughs> It's your phone. <laughs> That's the very first camera you'll always have. And they tell me now these cameras are incredible. Things like the iPhone or the Android have cameras that are top notch and 4K. So if you don't have the money or the budget to go buy a mirrorless camera, your phone is the best thing that you can use to start recording your podcast. It's gonna make you look clear, concise, and you've got some great apps like iMovie or Filmic Pro to help you actually film, edit, and produce your entire movie or content on your phone. So super incredible if you don't have the budget. But if you do have the budget to step in and start to look at traditional DSLR cameras, there is a ton of them, starting with Canon, Sony, Fuji, you name it, they've all got a camera. They can range from $499 up to thousands of dollars. But just make sure you get a camera that has specific features like autofocus or HDMI out and a memory slot so you can store your video content if you're on the go shooting out and about. Also, you'll want to make sure your camera can shoot 4K or above quality. The higher the resolution, the better your content will look on screen. Now, believe it or not, with all the bells and whistles and these great cameras, there's one last bonus thing you're going to need, and that are specific lenses. The lenses are what give you the great quality you're looking for and the depth of field. Those great things you see when it's blurry behind but up front looks good. That's what the lenses give you. So you're going to have to save a little bit more money, save a few more pennies to actually get your depth of field lenses. But you will need to catch a few. And a lot of the content creators I speak to look for the Sigma 16mm or the EF 22mm. And it will cover a host of multiple distances to give you that perfect shot. So as you think about these things, as you're making that dive, it's time to go ahead and get that camera. And you can take a look at multiple ones, but you'll pick the one that fits your needs the most and what fits your budget. So there's number four and that's choosing the right camera. Now you've got your room all set. The colors look great, the lighting is just right, you're in front of your camera and you're ready to smile. But you're speaking and no one can hear you. So what, there's no sound? <laughs> yep, you've arrived at number five. Step five is to have great quality sound or a great microphone. Now that seems like a no brainer too, doesn't it? But you gotta be able to hear. What good is the quality of your video when they're watching when they can't hear the message or can't hear the content? Choosing the right microphone can leave you a little dizzy, maybe keep you spinning. But let's take a look at a few things that can help you stop the spin and choose the right microphone for you and your budget. Luckily, IK makes a plethora of inexpensive microphones that will get the job done. Like this first one here, the iRig Mic Lab. It's only $39 and it's a mic lab that clips right on your lapel to sit you anywhere. You can plug it into your iPhone, your iPad, your iPod Touch, or your Android. So you've got great quick sound for only $39, and it sounds amazing. All right, Mike Lab, one of the best. I use it all the time. Now you've got a second choice. You've got the iRig Mic HD2. 
which is a handheld style professional microphone where you can do interviews and such back and forth. This one has a tripod stand which you can sit right in front just like I use this microphone here, but it goes 24-bit 96K quality, so giving that professional sound you're looking for. You're going to sound right every time with the Rabbit Mic HD. This one is $129.99. But what if you have your own physical hardware, your own little mixer, so to speak, and you can put your own microphones in, but you need to take that and plug that into your phone or your computer. Well, we've got an amazing digital interface called iRig Stream. It lets you take the left and right RCA of your mixer right into iRig Stream, right into your computer, or right into your phone. Super easy, super portable. It actually has a full, full length knob on the top that lets you go from low to high as far as input, so you can see just how hot you're bringing it in and you can make sure you get the right signal every time. And it comes with all the cables in the box to let you do exactly what you need to do with whatever device you have. Your iPhone, your iPad, your iPod Touch, your Mac or PC, and your Android. And if you're a DJ who loves streaming his music to his fans wherever he is, the audio stream is the perfect solution to be able to plug in left and right RCAs out of your turntables right inside your phone and stream your set right there to Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, you name it. The audio stream will get the job done and for only $99. So now with all these different solutions, you'll always remember that step five is probably the most important, and that's choosing the right audio or microphone. Now, wow, we have covered a lot of information today, so I'm sure your brain's probably on overload, just like mine. But let's do a quick recap to make sure we retain it all before we leave. Number one, or step one, was to choose the right subject or focus. Make sure you have something you could do that you're passionate about, something that people will follow you on, and that you narrow down that niche. Choose the right focus, definitely number one. Number two, choose your target audience. Make sure you figure out who you're talking to. Create your content design for just that audience and make sure they can find you wherever you are. Step three, create your lighting. Got to get that lighting together so your colors and textures look good. Make sure your room looks great. Make sure everything looks exactly how it should when they see you on camera. Step four, of course, grab that perfect camera. Your camera's got to do exactly what you need it to do when you need it to do it in great resolution in 4K and always be available for you. So get that perfect camera at the budget you need. Last but not least, and most importantly, you got to have great audio. Because what good is great content if nobody can hear you? So with everything we've talked about today, I hope you've learned some great information of how to start your very own first podcast. And if you enjoyed this kind of content, do me a favor. Stop right now, of course, and hit me with a like or subscribe to the channel so I can get more updated content to you like this as soon as it's available. And if you really enjoyed it, it's a heart to me, please do me a favor and share it with a friend. So we want to make sure everybody leaves uplifted, encouraged, and inspired. But if you have further questions, please reach out to us here at IK Multimedia at Derek.Floy at IKMultimedia.com or search us on the website or the YouTube channel at The Beautiful Now Podcast. Have a great one, guys. Take care. See you next time.